begin to look middle-aged. Um, we were out this week and, and uh, eating and uh, one of the child, 27, and she looked and said, man, you must be old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then when you tower to the youngest one of eight, you know, uh, quite a span. We had a grandson that had a birthday. He turned 22. Um, I don't know how Don got to be, but he will be 50 this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was 16 when we came here. I know. So, you know all the answers, but nobody asks you the questions. A lot of experience, you know, as, as we share together. Uh, if you're trying to straighten out the wrinkles in your socks, and you find out you aren't wearing any. <laughs> Uh, you know, you're getting old if you consider coffee one of the most important things in life. You know, you're getting old if people call you up night, so just just so we know that. You know, you're getting old when the little gray-haired lady that you're helping across the street <laughs> is your wife. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, you're getting old. Everything hurts, and what doesn't hurt doesn't work. Work. You know. Like it or not, we all get older. But with that, with age comes a lot of avoided. Every you know, you see all these commercials on TV about you know taking you know getting Botox and all kind of stuff like that. Or or uh, you know, uh, I like my brother-in-law used to say, you buy oil of delay. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, just uh, things to make you look uh, look younger and and keep. But I don't care what you do, you're not going to avoid it. There's only going to be people that try and try and try to do the right thing and live healthy and, and do things like that. And I just, uh, I, I think of uh, when I used to run, I put that way in the back tent, but I read a book by a man called Jim Fix on running. Uh, you know, uh, Jim was running and he was promoting all the ideas about running and how much healthier it made you. Uh, you know when Jim Fix died? He go through all these things people do. I remember growing up as a kid watching this guy, uh, uh, Jack LaRue. How many of you? <laughs> Jack? LaLane. 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 Yes. And uh, doing all these exercises. See, the mind goes too. <laughs> but, you start, uh, but you know what? Jack lived a long life, but he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that, those are just things. So one thing that keeps us from dying in this life, and that's if Jesus comes. And so we need to grasp hold of that and understand as a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ that <coughs> this isn't our life. Our life is hidden in heaven, at the right hand of the Heavenly Fathers. We're seated in heavenly places, according to what is God. But we can share what Christ has done for you. Job tells us, is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not a long life bring understanding? So there are experiences. I know, and most of us think about growing up, I, I didn't want people sharing those things. I got tired of living in West Virginia. When I was your age, we walked to school in the snow up to our hips. It was uphill both ways for five miles uh, and things like that. We, when we're younger, we don't want to hear that advice. But when we're older, we can, we can share the experiences. And that's what Job says. Wisdom is found among the age. Does long life, does not the presence of an elder, honor the presence of an elder and fear your God. I am the Lord. And so we do that. Solomon, when he wrote Ecclesiastes, he had this great word picture. Oh, we talked about, you know, you're getting old. When, but Solomon kind of did the same evil days come. And the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain in the day when the keepers of the house tremble. Now he's using word pictures here. So, uh, if you can, if you want to share what you, what you think some of these are, just shout out. The keepers of the house. That's probably good, Jack. I would say he, he talks about legs, because the next one, and the strong men do. 
And those who look through the window dim eyes. And the doors of the street that shut ears when the sound of grinding is low. And the one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of the song are brought low. They are afraid also of what, what is high, and terrors uh, drag itself along. <laughs> That's us, man. We're dragging ourselves along. Desire fails because man is going to his eternal home. Now, really, the Hebrew word for eternal home here is not eternal home. It means a dark place. They're going to the grave. And, uh, and so, and the mourners go about the streets. The silver cord is snapped, the golden bowl is broken, the pitcher is shattered down earth as it was, and the spear returns to God who gave it. And so Saul the older, the people came to him and said, all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at, the, at Ramah and said to him, behold, you are old. <clears throat> Anybody like to hear that? Yeah, you go to your doctor and they say, well, you know, because of your age, these things happen. Sometimes you want to say, you might think I'm old, but I can take you. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, you're old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now a point for us a chain like someone to do those things. No, we don't like to hear that. You're getting old. No, um, no you're as old as you think you are. Uh, Satchel Paige said, you wouldn't know how old you were if you didn't know when you were born. <laughs> That's true. You know, if you didn't know a date when you were born. I understand he pitched for the Cleveland Guardians are suing the Cleveland Indians because they stole their name. I think they could have come up with a better name than the Cleveland Guardians. So, yeah, but just, huh? Yeah, the Indians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they could have called themselves the Cleveland Native Americans. Come on. You know. <laughs> We don't, we, things we don't like to hear. But in our age, we can do some things. And the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses in trust to reliable people who also be qualified to teach others. And so that is our, that's our job. You know, we started this talking about we have one job to do, and this is it, to be a mentor, to lift people up. What, what, Paul's saying, what you've learned in me, you need to teach other people. Faithful disciples, faithful people who will also be qualified to teach others. So we're giving them something. Paul said, I gave it to you. Now you give it to someone else. Who will give it to someone else? And that is the way the church and the kingdom grows. Uh, and that's the only way it grows. We in the church are one generation away, generation is one generation away from not knowing what the Constitution of the United States says because they're not teaching. And so if we want the church to grow, we have to entrust to faithful people what has been entrusted to us and uh, they will be qualified to teach other people. Over and over man to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, sound in faith, and love, and endurance. Well, that's tough when you put that endurance in there for, for older, steadfastness. We're steadfast in our faith that we're going to do that. So Titus, make sure you teach these older men. And, and for Titus, I'm thinking he's like Timothy. Timothy was younger. The older men were not to teach sound doctrine to older men. And to encourage them to live the life they're called on to live. So as we get older, we need to find people. <clears throat> teach them what has been taught to us so that they enable them to teach other people. And then we find out also, uh, not slanders or slaves to too much wine. You got to cut out that second glass or whatever. Not slaves to too much wine. They are to teach what is good. And so to train young women, look at look what they're to train young women to do. Love their husbands and their children. Isn't that something that would come natural? Well, you have to remember for the most part, maybe they knew ahead of time, things like that. 
but it was the older women to teach the young women to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, submissive to their own husbands, then the word of God may not be reviled. See, when we get away from the word of God and do things on our own, people come. And Titus, again, was to mentor young men. When we read, similarly, encourage the young man to be self-controlled. You notice every one of these age groups and every one of these genders has this in it, self-control. Be self-controlled in everything. Set an example by doing what is good. And your teaching shows strength that we live the life. So we show that. Uh, so an opponent won't have a way to, to say anything about us. Well, he says he's a Christian, but he says this, or he acts this way, or does this, or, you know, that's not what he's supposed to be. And so uh, we lead to live the life. Mentor people. Share the message. Share what you know. Age brings wisdom. Age brings understanding. We need to share what we know, and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful. Uh, you know, that means faithful. We would determine if you went out and tried to start your car today and it wouldn't start, and it finally started, but you tried it tomorrow and it wouldn't start, and you tried it Tuesday and it wouldn't start, you'd think it wasn't faithful. <laughs> it's being unfaithful. Uh, uh, refrigerator, and you're called unfaithful. Be faithful unto death. I'll give you a crown of life. And the other thing is finish well. Finish this life well. Paul writes to Timothy, I have fought the good fight. The righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to also who have loved his appearing. Be faithful. Finish well. Paul says, I've fought good. I've finished the course. In, in Corinthians, he says, I run the race to win the crown. Finish well. Asa. In Asa, uh, it says, he did what was right in the sight of God. He cleaned up everything. He got rid of idols. He cleared out the temple. He fired his mother, who was the queen. He fired her because she had idols and worshipped idols. And so he, you know, we cannot win this battle. We depend on you. And they won the battles. God took care of all these things. And here was Asa, his whole life. He served for 39 years as king of Judah. But in the last year of his life, he didn't finish well. And then when he found out he had a disease, he didn't even inquire of God he went to the physicians he didn't trust he had a great life he did the right thing all the way on but he did not finish well and there's a great promise laid up for us in heaven All right, I've got this I just want to share with you growing old is mandatory growing up is optional <laughs> we don't have to be that crotchety old man or crotchety old woman especially for children of God because this life man we're just beginning we're just very starting out because eternity is waiting for those that are in Christ Unfortunately, it's waiting for those outside of Christ, just not in the same place. We can share the experiences that we have. Douglas Arthur said this, nobody grows old by merely living a number of years. People grow old only by finish well, be faithful unto death. Solomon ends this chapter in Ecclesiastes, 12th chapter by saying this the end of the matter has all been heard fear God keep his commandments for this 
This is it. This is what he concludes after everything. He starts out in the first chapter and the second chapter saying, you know, everything's vanity. I've tried it all. I've done it all. I've been it all. I've had all the money I've ever needed. I've done everything I ever wanted to do. It was all vanity. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. We need to tell people of our experience and understand that one day we will stand before God. For God will bring, when we come to Jesus, we become, we bury the old man, the old woman, and we rise to walk in a new life, brand new, forgiven by the grace and mercy of God. And that's his promise. We need to fear God, obey his command. You have given us a great, wonderful <coughs> life. It's a life that we need to share with people. What you have done for us throughout these years, how you have helped us, how you've blessed us. I know sometimes we just take for granted the blessings of life when we wake up in the morning and take a deep breath. We don't think, well, oh, man, God did that. Oh, he did, though. He did. You just poured your We need to share with others. We need to re-gift over and over and over again. That we need to take what someone has taught us and trust them to faithful people who will entrust those to other people that will entrust them to others. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's